Hello, Tom here, gunsmith here at Archangel Manufacturing. Today we're going to go over the installation of the Archangel Mosin stock, uh, the 9130 stock. First I want to talk about what comes with the package. Obviously you get the stock here. It comes with a, a magazine. Some of them have a 10 rounder and some of them have come with a 5 rounder. Both magazines are available through us. So if you wanted more than one or an extra magazine or a different capacity, we have those available for you. With the stock, you get a parts packet. And in that parts packet is an Allen wrench. And that fits the, the included action screws that come with it. You'll get a long screw and a short screw. The long screw goes in the rear and the short screw goes in the front. We have changed and updated the rear pillar of this thing and it will soon be shipped with a shorter screw. It'll probably be about that long, but it'll still be a long screw and a short screw. We've changed the rear pillar to accept the shorter screw. The reason behind that is we have found that the Mosins have a fairly wide variation in the rear thickness of the receiver and we found a couple Mosins that are actually thinner in the rear, allowing the screw to screw further down into the stock and actually break the bottom of the trigger guard. So unless you have one of the thinner Mosins, it works as we designed it. And future rifles, it'll be a non-issue. But again, if you have any problems with it, it cracks or whatever, it's 100% warranty. There won't be any problem with us replacing it at all. It comes with a plug here. This plug goes in the side of the rifle right here and slips down inside there. That plug is, needs to be in the stock when you're using a factory trigger. When you're going to install a Timney trigger, you take that plug out, and that space in there is for the Timney safety to clearance back and forth. Also included in the parts packet is a Uncle Mike style sling stud. Uh, this sling stud is for the attachment of a uh, Harris bipod. The attachment point is this hole right here in the stock. That hole doesn't go through, it's a blind hole right now. Not everybody wants to install that in there, so we leave that hole blind so your stock is clean from the bottom. If you choose to install the, a Harris or any other bipod or you need the extra sling stud, you get an 11 64th drill bit and you drill from the, from the inside of the barrel channel down through the bottom and then install your sling stud from the outside and you have a place to put your, your, either your sling or your uh, bipod. Also included in the kit is a barrel tensioner. The barrel tensioner is an adjustable block that allows you to regulate the amount of pressure on the bottom side of the barrel. The tensioner goes into the pocket just in front of this black plastic plug here. And I'll explain about that plug in just a minute, but you press it into the bottom, all the way down to the bottom of the, of the pocket, and then from the bottom of the stock or the underneath the forend, once you've installed the rifle, you can take an Allen wrench and go in there and tighten or loosen that Allen wrench and it'll increase or decrease the tension applied to the bottom of the barrel. By doing so, you can regulate your point of impact and your barrel harmonics getting a tighter grouping and much more accuracy out of them. Some of them require that, some of them shoot better without that. So when you go to install your rifle, you can either stick this in and run it all the way down. If it doesn't touch a barrel, you can start from there or you can just assemble it without it, go and shoot it and see if you're getting great accuracy out of it or better accuracy out of it and then go back and install it, try different tensions on it. You're going through your different, if you find different types of ammunition or if you're hand loading, you can really fine tune your rifle to the ammunition and get the highest accuracy out of it with the barrel tension. The plug I was mentioning here has a screw in the center of it. Some Mosins have a uh, dovetailed rear sight that's dovetailed in the top of the barrel. With those type of sights, you leave this plastic filler plug in place. With the Mosins with the banded rear sight, that screw comes out and this little plug comes out and that clearances for the band. So depending on what, you, what rifle you have, if you have a banded rear sight, you take that out. If you have a dovetailed rear sight, you leave it in. A little bit on the finish rifles. The finish rifles are generally a heavy barrel. With the heavy barrel finish rifles, you can fit them in here. It is not a drop-in fit. You have to go in here and re-inlet this and open up the inlet in here to, to clearance the barrel, the heavy barrel finish rifles. So this is a Chinese Type 53 Mosin. 
It's basically a copy of the Russian M44 carbine. It is more or less identical to it, except it was made in a different country. We're gonna go ahead and tear this thing down. It's never been apart before. It came, this came directly from the importer to us, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it apart. I would highly recommend when you pull your Mosin apart for the first time that you have an ample amount of grease rags and cleaning supplies on hand because there is almost always an abundance of cosmoline inside grease and, and uh, gunk in there that you're gonna need to wipe up. So what you wanna do first, with any firearm that you want to pull the bolt back and make sure that there's no ammunition in the magazine. Note that I wanted to touch on was some of these Mosins, and this one is, is no different than others, the screws will basically loosen up from the wood swelling and contracting and they'll start backing out. If this rear screw is loosened up enough, you cannot take the bolt, you can't cycle the bolt. It'll get jammed in there. Basically, you're going to need to have the, the bolt down, you pull the trigger, it'll, the striker will go down, and then you can actually tighten the screw so you can get the bolt out. Then once you've got it down below the surface of the receiver, you can open the bolt, pull it to the back, pull the trigger, take the bolt out. <clears throat> We're gonna open the bayonet up. There are two bands holding the handguard on, here and here. Those two bands are held in place with these spring uh, clips. Basically, you're gonna to wanna to lay it down. I like to put my arm on it to support it, push down on the band and then down on the retaining clip and then forward on the band. Having a screwdriver at hand is, it makes it a lot easier to basically get the screwdriver between the band and the wood. If you're taking a rifle apart that's really nice and you wanna preserve the wood, uh, this one is not. By um, just looking at it, you can tell that it's pretty bad. If you have one that's really nice and original, you want to save the wood, uh, you, can, you can wrap tape around the tip of this. You can use a plastic wedge to push the bands off, but we're not obviously worried about that this time. So push the clip down, pry the band forward over the top of the clip, and then work the clip forward. And you repeat that with the front one. The front one doesn't have the end of the stock here to pry against, so you have to push on the band itself, and they're tight. Kind of work it forward all the way around, getting the off side slightly forward, and then depress that band. Sometimes you'll need another tool to depress that band down. There we go. And once you get the band over the keeper, the stopper there, the keeper, you can pull it forward and off the end of the, the uh, stock and the rear one will just slide forward. Now you have your handguard off. Set that off the side. And then we can take a look at the rust and cosoline and gunk that's underneath, just under the handguard. Set the rifle back on its uh, top. We'll take this tag off. Take the screws out of the trigger guard. It's actually better to take the rear action screw out first and then the front one because it wants to, to come apart like this, like I just did, but you have to hold, hold it with your hand. So now you have that out of there, both action screws and your trigger guard. And there's cosmoline all the sides of this, covered in grease, that they've, they did that in China to protect it from rust for long-term storage. So now we've got the stock off. We'll set that down here. At this point, you're gonna to want to take a hair dryer, a heat gun, or some other heat source, a portable heater, and get this thing warmed up. The grease they use, it's known as cosmoline, is, it melts um, at a pretty reasonably low temperature. When you melt the stuff, when you get it hot, it'll start running out all the nooks and crannies and, and come off, and you take towel, paper towels or grease rags or whatever, and and heat it and wipe it and heat it and wipe it. It's a long, tedious process, but it has to be done. Stop by your local hardware store and get some kerosene or some safety solvent or something like that and clean it up really good. Um, get all the cosmoline off of it. These bands that retain the handguard have to come off. They are a spring steel band. On the 9130s, you've got a couple choices. 
you can drive the front sight out on the 9130 and they'll just come off the end. They are very tight and it's difficult to get them off, the front sight that is. The other way which most people do is simply take a Dremel tool and cut the bottom side of it. They're a split band, uh, probably hard to see on video, but it's a split band and they stretch apart. If you just cut the bottom of the band, they'll snap off. The other method is to pry the two bands apart, basically using two pair of vice grips, two people, it makes it a lot easier if you have one guy hold one side and the other side and you pull on it and then slide the rifle out. Another method that I tend to use is to simply clamp one half of the band in a vise and pull on it and then you just bend the band open and you slide it off the site. I'm going to go over right now the interrupter. This piece right here is the interrupter. Um, it actually is basically a cartridge cutoff. When you cycle the bolt, this piece here moves out of the way and lets another bolt, another cartridge in or stops cartridges from flowing or popping out of the magazine. These interrupters come in multiple thicknesses. The Early on in our development, every rifle we had was of the same thickness. We measured and checked all of it. And then we found out there was countries that made a slightly thicker interrupter. With that slightly thicker interrupter, it um, had a tendency to bind and not function as well in our stock. This is a current production stock. It has an extra relief right here on the side, right next to the, right where the receiver is, where the interrupter is. There's a little extra relief there, a little material removed from there, and it allows complete clearance of the interrupter and, it, and no binding occurs. On an older version, it's just a square surface there. So if you, have, if you end up with an older stock and you find out you have a thicker rifle, you can go in here and just remove that corner off of the thing. A file can be used. Um, I generally use a Dremel tool and just cut the corner right off the thing. You're only taking a little bit of material off of it. If you get an older stock and you relieve it and you, you're not going to negatively affect a rifle that doesn't need it, it'll work just fine. So if you have a, an older stock and you relieve this corner, whether you need it or not, it's not going to hurt you. So I'm going to set this rifle aside because it needs to be cleaned before we install it in a stock and I'll grab this one here. It's already been cleaned up and it's nicer to handle. That brings to mention here the Timney trigger. This is a great addition to the Mosin stock or the Mosin rifle. It makes it go from a long, creepy, rough trigger to a, a modern, crisp, nice breaking trigger. With the banded rear sight, you're gonna need to remove this little plug here. You need a Phillips screwdriver and you simply remove the Phillips screw in the center and the plug will come right out. Once you have the plug out, you can go ahead and continue your installation. Again, with your Timney in place, your Timney trigger, you don't need to put the plug in the back here. So leave that plug out. Go ahead and drop the rifle in place. Lay it on its back. Install your front screw. Now you can run this front screw in. You don't want to tighten it all the way up, but just run it in where it's slightly snug and back it off a little bit. So there's a, the ability for the rifle to move if need be. And then go ahead and drop your rear screw in and run it in. The uh, rear pillar threads in the rear pillar are a tighter tolerance thread, uh, basically making it somewhat like a lock screw so it doesn't back out on you. The factory guns have a tendency to loosen up on you, so we put a tighter tolerance thread on it. So you're going to have to, you're going to find, you're going to feel resistance on that rear screw more so than the front. When you, once we get the front and rear screw in, go ahead and stand it on its butt. Pull back, pull down on the barrel and continue tightening the front screw. You can tighten this down to a you know, good snug tight fit. If you have a torque wrench, 
you're going to go to 65 inch pounds, tighten it down to 65 inch pounds, repeat in the rear, tighten it down to 65 inch pounds. Now you have your Mosin stock installed and you're ready to test fit your magazine. If it locks in place, you're good to go. If it does not lock in place, you can simply take a file and remove a very small amount of material from this surface right here. All current magazines have had this modification done and we've allowed or we have uh, accommodated for the difference in, this, in the different rifles. Some of the earlier uh, magazines were designed for the earlier stocks. You can occasionally need to remove a little bit of material there to get it to fit. This one fits perfectly and ready to go to the range and shoot it and try it out. We have had a couple issues with our magazines. Early on, we had a polymer that was shrinking too much in the center and it would actually stick the follower down in the magazine and not feed the rounds properly. If you have that issue, give us a call and we will warranty it. It's a completely lifetime warranty, so it's not an issue. We'll get you one of the new magazines and it, you won't have that problem. Another problem we've had just recently was the cartridge retention spring right here one of the batches from our vendor did not heat treat it properly. So when you, you start out, it works just fine, and then the spring bends out and doesn't return. Again, fully warrantied. If you have that problem, you're having cartridges pop out of the top of your magazine, give us a call, we'll get you a new magazine. Not a problem. We had a small batch of our Mosin stocks that had an oversized magazine retention, magazine catch hole. Um, this hole right here was a little oversized, and it doesn't really affect any problem unless you start wiggling the pin with the catch with the rifle on its side. If you do that, that pin can fall out on some of the extreme cases. We've come up with a remedy for that, and that is this oversized pin. There's nothing wrong with the stock. It doesn't affect its function. That pin can just fall out of there. So we come up with this repair. You take this pin. It's a headed pin. You can feel the head with your finger. That head goes in last. It is la it's like a head of a nail. So you put the rifle on its side, put the pin in the hole, and then put your finger inside the magwell and hold, hold the mag catch in place. You're going to kind of want to take some tension off of it and then drive the pin in place. Now I have the old pin uh, driven in, and the old pin is coming out the other side, as you can see there. And we're going to want to drive it in flush. Grab my roll of tape to support it. Once that pin goes flush, it's completely installed. The old loose pin will have fallen out on the table. And as you saw there, I used a roll of masking tape, works as a great bench block and allows it to come out and drop out the other side. Now that catch will no longer fall out on, on you from uh, flexing this around. It will not come out. That headed pin stops it from coming out. Uh, as a note there, you want to remember which direction you drove it in and drive it back out from the other side. I want to talk about the trigger travel relief in the back of the trigger guard. When the trigger is pulled to the back, on some of the factory triggers, it will, they will actually strike the back of the trigger guard. The trigger will strike the back of the trigger guard before the rifle actually fires. Now this is a Timney trigger and there is no issue with it, but I'm going to demonstrate what and how to relieve um, the back of the trigger guard to get that to clear, just in case. So what you do is you pull your, you cock the rifle and then you pull the trigger back and when it fires, it, you, you want it to fire. If it doesn't fire, like this one here will fire, hammer drops or striker drops and it goes to the back. On one that will not fire, you, the trigger will hit the back of the trigger guard. Let's see if I can get to the camera here. Trigger will go back and the back of the trigger will hit the actual trigger guard. So what you want to do on the one that hits is you want to pull the trigger to the back to where it hits the trigger guard and then take a pencil and mark inside the trigger guard where it's actually hitting on both sides. It, the trigger is a radius in that spot, so you'll mark the sides on each side and then just pass the radius on each end of the top and bottom of it. 
<clears throat> then you'll take, if it's just a little tiny bit, you can take sandpaper like emery cloth and stick it in there and you can actually uh, pull the tr push the trigger back and pull the emery cloth through the trigger guard and it'll actually sand it out right exactly where it needs it and then you're done. If it's an extreme case, you'll need to take your rifle out of the stock and then what I suggest is a Dremel tool with a ball end mill or a ball cutter on the end of it and you can go in there and grind the trigger guard on the inside where you've marked it with a pencil grind and relieve that area and blend it in and if it's done right you can blend it in where you can't even tell and then when you pull the trigger the trigger will have a, a pocket to move into to allow it to fire. The other option of that one would be to take it to a gunsmith and have the gunsmith refit the, the, uh, the sear surfaces or even better would be to put a Timney trigger in it and you won't have that problem at all. If you have any other questions please don't hesitate to contact us here at ProMag Archangel. You can reach us by phone, or you can get us on our website at archangelmanufacturing.com, or you can get us on Facebook at Archangel Manufacturing.